Niven the Bruce and today on Jungle Queens we have one from 1953 the perils of the jungle and this is one hour and three minutes I believe and um, it stars Phyllis Coates now she's been in other Jungle Queen films uh, well, there's this one perils of the jungle and then she was on the TV jungle series, Rama of the Jungle, in 1953. And she was in Panther Girl in 1955. So she's had quite the, um, quite the run with um, Jungle Queen films. Yes, she has. Do you also know who she is? I mean, Phyllis Coates? Phyllis Coates is Lois Lane in the uh, 1950s Superman TV uh, show. Yeah, and um, I think she was even on um, uh, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and she played uh, Lois Lane's mom. And that was in the 90s. So, boy, she had a good, long career. As a matter of fact, as I've mentioned before, uh, she was one of the uh, b uh, most employed uh, Hollywood actresses in the 50s and the 60s. She just always had roles. Now, she, I mean, she wasn't an A-lister. Everything was mostly a B-film, but consistently moving her craft. And if you count from, let's say, um, the 1950s, uh, well, actually, she started in the 40s, right? 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Wow, that's a good long career. So more power to her. This film has about th three sections in it. It's, it's uh, kind of strange. And uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good jungle film. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's enjoyable. You'll, you'll, you'll watch it. It won't be your very favorite one. And it seems like it has three stories going on, and basically they revolve around uh, animal rights. So uh, that's that's kind of an interesting take. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoy this. I'm David the Bruce. Let's get on with the perils of the jungle.
Bob, will you turn on the lights, please? Oh, Uncle Grant, those were wonderful pictures. They certainly were. May I run them for the class at school? I can get credits for it. Why, yes, I guess I could let you have them. Of course, I haven't finished editing them, you know. Let me do it for you, Uncle Grant. I have my own cutting equipment, and you know I'm pretty good at editing. Well, that may be true, but the picture isn't completed yet, Mary. I have one more trip with Clyde Beatty before it'll be finished. Any chance of our going with you? When does Mr. Beatty's circus close? You can't leave before then, can you? Wait a minute now. One question at a time, Mary. Number one, Clyde Beatty's adventures are a little too dangerous for inexperienced persons. <clears throat> of course, I'm not too experienced, but Clyde <laughs> likes my company. And number two, the Clyde Beatty Circus closes in California tomorrow, and I'm leaving tonight by plane to join him. When are you going to get back, Unc? Well, that's a pretty difficult question to answer, my boy. You see, when you travel with Clyde Beatty, one at best forget all about timetables and let fate take its course. I'll keep you posted after we get to Africa. Now, let's rewind this film and all get to bed, right? Good night, Uncle Grant. Good night, kiddies. Africa, adventure, two words with but one meaning. For here, untouched and untroubled by civilization, lie thousands upon thousands of square miles of veldt and jungle. One such territory lying on either side of the equator is the Belgian Congo. Its mighty rivers winding through the dense tangle of green, its strange, unpredictable natives, and of course, its countless wild animals of all sizes and descriptions. How small and unimportant we felt, Clyde Beatty and I, as our safari pushed on toward the village of Caballo and the rail line which would link us with civilization once more. Keeping up with Clyde isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, as even our native boys learned. So we welcomed his signal to halt and rest for a moment. What do you think, Grant? How much farther to Caballo? Oh, shouldn't be more than four or five miles now. We'll make it by noon. If those flat feet of yours hold up. <laughs> well... Right. Did you hear what I heard? If you heard a lion roar, I did. Sounds like a group of them. What would they be doing around here? I don't understand it. Lions usually stick to more open country. That's one way to find out. Daruka Magandhi. Heaven's sake, there's a clearing and some buildings. I never expected to find a zoo in the middle of Africa, Clyde. That makes two of us. <laughs> I thought the nearest animal dealer was in Albertville. We saw some of the finest and biggest lions ever captured. Black men Nubians, which made Clyde fairly envious. man is. We'll soon find out. Gabba, Rota, Najita. Sorry, Buona. No, I understand. Oh, he asked you who these animals belong to. Who's the boss around here? Oh, a boss named Joe Buona. You like see? Yes, we will. Uh, come, I take. The native led the way through the jungle to the owner's bungalow. Grant, not bad. Mmm, 
This whole setup's good. Nice house, small fortune in animals at the compound. You wanted to see me, gentlemen? The place is full of surprises. Oh, the native boy must have made a mistake. Uh, we asked to see the boss. Uh, someone called Joe? There's been no mistake. I'm the boss and I'm Joe. Josephine oh. Carter, to be more formal. Well, Miss Carter, I'm Clyde Beatty. How do you do? This is my friend, Grant Cunningham. Oh, How do you do? Pleasure. Won't you please sit down? Well, thank you. We were uh, hardly expecting to find a young lady in charge of a place like this, Miss Carter. Just Joe. Uh, Joe. I inherited the place when my father died, Mr. Cunningham. But who captures the animals for you? I capture them myself, with the help of the natives, of course. Those lines we saw in the compound, Joe, are any of them for sale? No, I'm sorry. All the animals have been committed already. I'm shipping them to Albertville next week. You are the only woman animal dealer I've heard of. What made you try it? Oh, I don't know. There's something about the Congo and capturing wild animals that, well, it's sort of a challenge. I wanted to see if I could make a go of it. A lighter of mine now. Where could I have... Uh, I'll get some matches. Oh, oh, thank you. of it all was that we got a couple of good pictures of the rare old copy. That's an animal most people never even heard of. You were lucky. Dad tried for years, but he never did capture one. Mm -hmm. Mama! I want to know! That's Korja. He sounds mighty excited. Korja, what is it? What's the matter? It's fire! Big fire! Animal said. Oh, no! I can't tell you how sorry I am, Joe. I know how you must feel. Uh, tell me, dear, do you have insurance? Not a piece worth. I guess I'm wiped out. I wish there was some way we could help. The fire's out, Joe. We managed to keep it from spreading to the other buildings. 
Thank you. Any idea how it started, Clyde? No. I asked the natives. They didn't learn anything. Hmm. Well, I guess Gorman will have the territory all to himself now. That's the way he's always wanted it. Uh, Gorman? My father's partner. Oh, what happened to him? He's still an animal dealer. But he took half the equipment and his share of the capital and went to the village. Didn't want to stick with you. Is that it? That I couldn't make a go of it. Well, I guess he's right. I've had Cordia put your things in the spare room if you'd like to clean up. You think I need it? A dirtier fireman I've never seen. <laughs> That's about the story, I guess. She's wiped out, thanks to the fire. That's rough. I wonder what she'll do now. Well, I don't know. She said something about leaving the territory to Gorman. Evidently, she's got to give it up. Shut up and get out of my way. Hello, Joe. Surprised to see me? Not in the least. I've been expecting you. Well, that ain't that nice. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Well, aren't you going to ask me to sit down? No. What's on your mind, Gorman? When news got to the village that my competition had gone up in smoke, I thought I'd drop by and offer my condolences. Thank you very much. Is that all? No. Now that you mention it, I thought you might be interested in selling the place. You're the last person in the world I'd sell to, and you know it. Oh, excuse us, Joe. I didn't know you had come. That's perfectly all right. Come in. Well, Joe, I see you've got company. Mr. Beatty, Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Gorman. How do you do, Mr. Beatty? Uh, Mr. Cunningham, happy to know you. Nice to meet you. Yes. Like I was saying, Joe, now that you're through as an animal dealer... I... Who said she's through? I did. And she should have been through a long time ago. She's been doing pretty well up until now. All right, she's been lucky. But now her luck's run out. I'm here to offer a good price for the place. I told you I'm not interested. If that's the way you want it? Of course, you could always capture a gorilla like you always planned. There's big money in that. Maybe I will. At least now I know where to locate one, which is something you were never able to do. <laughs> you know where to find a gorilla in these parts? Don't make me laugh. I don't expect you to believe me, and I don't care. Now, will you please get out of here? All right. I'll go when I'm ready. She means now, Gorman. Beat it. All right, I'm going. I'll see you later. Nice fellow. Yes, isn't he? Joe, what's this all about gorillas? It's true. Corja and I found gorilla tracks not over 30 miles from here. I think we can help you. Gorillas are worth several thousand dollars in any zoo in the world. Why, yes, of course, but... but... Clyde, you're not thinking of trying to capture an adult gorilla, surely? I sure am. We've got all the equipment and the native boys would need. Why not? What do you think, Joe? I say, when do we start? We'll get everything organized and start the first thing in the morning. Good. Starting early the next morning, we pushed through the jungle on our search for the gorilla. We passed by a small village, not bothering to stop. Clyde never delayed a safari unless it was necessary. Once we did stop to concede the right of way to this massive inhabitant of the jungle. Then on again, covering as much distance as daylight would permit. Uh. More coffee, Joe? Please. How much farther tomorrow, Joe? Oh, I'd say eight miles or so. But it's tougher going from now on, so we probably won't get there until mid-afternoon. Do we pass through any more native villages? No, but there's some on beyond where we're going. Miss? The drums. Those must be the drums of the village we passed through this morning. Corja! Yes, Mguana? What did the drums say? They send word to other villages. Say our safari come this way. I guess they like to gossip as much as anybody else. Mguana Joe. They say another safari passed through village a few hours after we do. What? Say other safari be one white guana and three natives. Gorman. Gorman must be following us. Why, that... Joe, he believed you after all. 
He's letting us lead him to your gorillas. Maybe we can lose him tomorrow. I doubt it. He probably has a good tracker. But what can we do? Right now, we'd better get some sleep. Our best bet is to find those gorillas before Gorman finds us. You're right. Good night, Joe. Good night, Klein. Good night, good night Grant. Grant. The going became tougher the next day. Still, we pushed on, trying to put more distance between our safari and Gorman. Mid-afternoon found us in a small clearing near our objective. Clyde decided that we should set up our camp here. We would scout for gorilla signs without our equipment. Here's our gorilla tracks. There's two different sets of tracks. They entered the trail from that brush over there. This is just about where we found the tracks the last time. They must use this trail to get to water. A small spring not far ahead, Juana. Just as I thought. Well, apparently they've been to water today. Yeah. And they won't go again until tomorrow. That's a break for us. Of course. We'll have time to dig a pit and get everything set up before dark if we hurry. If we can only keep Gorman away from here. We'll figure a way to do that if he shows up. Right now, we'd better get back to camp. We have no time to lose. was busy with the natives, supervising the digging of a trap pit near where we'd found the gorilla tracks, Joe and I made sure that the net we had was secure and strong enough to take care of Mr. Gorilla, if we were lucky enough to catch him. Boys, put the net over the pit and cover it with brush. Yes, Juana. Asura, uh, need a gun. I need your rifle, Grant. Oh, sure thing, Clyde. You're going to rig up a warning system? That's right. Uh -huh. Is that a hole? Well, this is a new one on me, Clyde. How does it work? It's very simple. Put this fine wire around here, around the trigger. Then down under the, the scoop so mm -hmm. right over to the net. That's it. Well, that's ingenious. All right, we're all done. Now all we have to do is release the safety catch on the rifle. And if a gorilla falls into the net, it'll pull the wire and fire the rifle. Well, that's wonderful. But will the sound carry clear back to camp? Oh, we'll hear it all right, providing we get a gorilla. We use the box as bait. That's right. A gorilla's a very curious animal. From now on, we keep our fingers crossed. Okay, Cordia, start the boys back to camp. Arishwe, All right, Joe.
Jenny's right. Blast the luck I was in hopes he'd get lost. He'll spoil everything. No, he won't. We won't let him. Well, now, isn't this a pleasant surprise? Running into old friends in the middle of nowhere. What do you want, Gorman? The same thing you do, Beatty. A gorilla. Then suppose you go someplace else to find one. You know two hunting parties in this area will drive them out. Maybe and maybe not. Just what do you intend to do, Gorman? You'll find out soon enough. Look, we've got a trap set up the trail. Well, how very interesting. And you're not going any farther, understand? See here, Beatty. I've got a right to go anywhere I want to in this forsaken jungle. Now, Gorman, we've got him. Luck. Call it what you will. The fact remains we've got a gorilla. There must be others around, and nothing to prevent me from getting one. Alagadina! He's a big one, Joe. What happened to Gorman? Oh, he's seen enough. He's gone. I've got to take that chance. Oh, we'd better get him to camp and patch him up. Have the boys make a litter to carry him on. How are you feeling now, Gorman? How would you think? You'll be all right, Clyde. You saved my life. Thanks. Is that all you've got to say? What else is there to say? Thanks, Betty. Goodbye. <laughs> Somehow I have a feeling he won't be interested in any more gorillas. Speaking of gorillas, we better break camp and get this one back before some more show up. Cordia, break camp. 
Well, we'd better get back to the village, Grant. I guess so, Clyde. There won't be another train for three days. We'd better not miss it. I hate to see you go, and I can't thank you enough. Well, no thanks are necessary, Joe. By the way, I'm putting my order in now for two of those blackening lines. You'll get them before you know it, and with my compliments. Thanks, Joe. Take care of yourself. I will, Clyde. Take good care of Gorman there, too. <laughs> I certainly will. Dad, look in Gila. Bye, Joe. Bye. Bye. Golly, I didn't think we'd ever get back, but we did. And by George, this time, Clyde really hit the jackpot. I saw him. I've never known of a foreground gorilla I've been taken alive yet. That Clyde did. <laughs> Leave it to him. <laughs> he always comes up with the impossible. You can take my word for yes, that. Yes, that's right. Say, have you got a match? A match? All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, and, and that's not all, Mac. You heard about Gorman. I wish I'd never heard about Mr. Gorman. Oh, then you don't know what happened to him. Mr. Cunningham, the whole of Cape Town knows what happened to him. It was sad. Very, very sad. <laughs> that's, that's very good. Sad. Sad indeed why the scoundrel got everything he deserved. Why I'll never forget the look on his face when Clyde saved his life. <laughs> why we even named the Gorilla Gorman. <laughs> Uh, what's the matter, Mac? Don't you feel well? Oh, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah, well, now to business. I brought back these things uh, to return, and I want some more film for the trip home. Oh, you've got another match. Well, another match? Lost my confounded lighter. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd dare well say that Bounder Gorman stole it. You mean Bounder, don't you, Mr. Cunningham? Bounder, Bounder, call it what you... <laughs> Why, where in the world did you come from? Well, you should know. I came from the same place you did, the gorilla country, don't you remember? Where's Beatty? I called you a bounder and I meant it. Furthermore, I wouldn't insult Clyde Beatty by telling you where he is. How do you like that, Mr. Gentlemen, Bounder? gentlemen, you too, Mr. Goldman. I've got to have fighting here in this establishment. This is no gentleman, Mac. He's a confounded bounder. Bounder, Mr. Cunningham. Okay, I just came here to repay Beatty a favor. Which I couldn't do at the time. We want no favors from you, 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 you. Bounder is the name, Mr. Cunningham. But you can tell Beatty, if you can remember, that I know where he can bag a couple of black maned lions, if he's interested. So glad to have seen you again, Mr. Cunningham. You can tell Beatty I'll be at my hotel. Bounder. That, 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 that. The words bounder. That's it, that bounder. Why, that... Mac, what did he say about black maned lions? Mr. Gorman says for you to tell Mr. Beatty. He knows where he's a bag a couple of black maned lions if he's interested. What's well, such a silly question. Of course he's interested. At this time of the year, it's impossible to get lions. Mac, where's your phone? Where's phone? Mr. Beatty? He's chartering a plane. We're supposed to leave tomorrow. The phone, Mac, the phone. Uh, here's the phone, Mr. Cunningham. Well, why didn't you tell me? Hello, give me the airport. No, 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 make it the Vando Motel. Oh, yes. Hello, hello. Who's this? The Vondo Motel? Uh, fine, fine. Is Clyde Beatty there? Oh, my. Yes. Yes, you say he left about ten minutes ago. Yes, all right. Thanks. Thanks very much. Mr. Beatty left five minutes ago, Mr. Cunningham. Whom do you wish? Mr. Clyde Beatty? One moment, please. I believe I can find Mr. Beatty. Mr. Clyde Beatty, please. Mr. Clyde Beatty. Would you please report to the information desk? Mr. Clyde Beatty. Mr. Beatty, please. Please report to the information desk. Yes, Clyde, yes. Yes, right away. Oh, what a break. Caught him just in time. Oh, now, now, Mac, to business. Now, let me see. We'll, uh, we'll need small attempts this time. Yes, must travel fast and light. Hence. And, uh, oh, yes, uh, we'll need some additional flashlights. Uh -huh, flashlights. And, uh, oh, oh, don't forget my film. <laughs> must have my film. The, uh... That's right, and uh, then uh, another three more blankets, I hope. Oh, yes. Uh, canteens. All right, that's fine, yes. 
The region extending from the Transvaal border northward to the boundaries of the Belgian Congo and of Tanganyika territory is named for the great British colonial and imperial statesman Cecil Rhodes. This South Central African territory is separated by the Zambezi River into northern and southern Rhodesia and includes what was probably the greatest gold field of the world. In the center of this area is Salisbury, capital of southern Rhodesia. It was there Clyde Beatty and I journeyed, not in search of gold, but to obtain from the district commissioner permits necessary to conduct a safari through the British colony. It's good to see you again, Commissioner. I this is splendid, Beatty. Delighted to see you again. This is my friend, Graham Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham. Commissioner? I take it you're a fellow adventurer? Well, anyone who's a friend of Clyde Beatty would have to be, wouldn't he, sir? How much do you gentlemen know of the area into which you're going? Been on safari there. It's loaded with animals. Especially a type we want for the museum. Mm, anything else? I believe I know what you're getting at, Commissioner. However, friend Beatty's idea of what constitutes something dangerous is a bit different from most. Exactly. My dear Beatty, I've granted permits covering the itinerary you outlined for your safari. Uh, however, uh, are you aware of the dangers you might encounter? Well, we know quite a bit about that area, Mr. Commissioner. Right, Grant? <laughs> yes, we do. The first leg of our safari takes us through gently undulating terrain wherein wild game abounds. The natives are friendly. However, when we trek through the Zambezi Basin and northward, we must dispose of our vehicles and employ only human porters for transport. This because of Glossina morsitans tsetse fly, the carrier of encephalitis lethargica, sleeping sickness. Amazing. <laughs> uh, in addition, there are remnants in this region of the Matabele, a fiercely savage race of bloodthirsty natives. Yes, gentlemen, if you value your lives, you must constantly beware of all tsetse and certain tribes of the Matabele. I've run across the Matabele before. They didn't give me any trouble. Ah, but were they of the Wambasi tribe? No. Recently, the Wambasi seem to have reverted to their old savage ways. They've given us no end of trouble. In that case, sir, our safari will lightly and politely skirt the borders of their land. Mm. Good luck, gentlemen. A week's trek found our safari progressing through country teeming with wild game. Clive seemed to possess an amazing amount of energy. It was always a welcome relief whenever his attention was diverted long enough to enable us to stop for a moment's rest. Kenny, our scout for the safari, spotted a family of lions feeding on a kill. Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! There's a lion! Speak! Jump! point indicated by Kenny, we halted and peered through the brush at a pride of magnificent lions. That big fellow standing guard. What do you think of him, Grant? Amazing. Great. Just what we want. Okay, we'll bag him then. Well, you're not going to try a shot from this distance, are you? No, we'll make him come to us. 
Stay, Chops. You stay here with Mr. Cunningham. Kenny and I'll go downwind. You stay put. Want to be a shake, Clyde? I'll be in a position for the best shot. So if that cat comes this way, don't fire. Right. Come on, kid. From my hiding place, I watched Clyde and Kenny move into the open. Each animal's attention was fixed on the spot where the two terrified natives and I were conceived. It knew we were there. I watched the beast come closer and closer. Mr. Cunningham. I know. We'll get a shot before he gets too close. Kubak! Clyde had told me not to fire. I trusted his judgment. Flash this thing, jam! He's charging us to Cunningham! Shoot, shoot, shoot! shoot. 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 Hey, get up and down, wave your arms. We gotta stop that cat! Ah! Ah! Hey, Kenny. <laughs> yes, Mr. Beatty. Clyde, are you all right, man? Sure, sure, I'm all right. Cat put up quite a battle, didn't he? Oh, my, scared me to death. Why in heaven's name didn't you use your rifle? The darn thing jammed. Uh-oh. And I was holding my fire, but you told me to. I was only obeying orders. Yeah, orders are orders. But when a cat that big gets that close, shoot, my friend, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Flick it off. Mm -hmm. I said flick it off. Yes, of course. Hey, it's the idea, Clyde. This is. What's that? Take a look at the critter through your glass. Hmm, interesting specimen. Brownish color. Mottled markings. Long proboscis. What would you say it is, my friend? Unquestionably Glossina morsitans. Or TC fly. A little beauty that could put you to sleep, permanently. That's what you flicked off my cheek? Yeah. For all we know, you could be full of those, uh... The Trypanosoma oh, Thanks, Clyde. I, I... I was so absorbed with this interesting specimen of Daisy that I... Well, watch these fellas. Or you'll be pushing up daisies instead of studying them. A few days after the episode of the Tsetse fly, I began to feel a series of distressing symptoms. I became increasingly sure that I'd been bitten by a virus-laden insect. I tried to hide it from Clyde, but... Mr. Bailey! Take it easy, Grant. I will. I will, Clyde. Oh, thanks, thanks. How long have you felt like this? Felt rocky few days. Nothing serious. Probably just a touch of fever. You've got more than a touch. What hurts? Well, Clyde, there's, there's little lethargy, occasional diplopia, slight ptosis of the lids. Meaning? Double vision and drooping of the eyelids. Possibly a bit of influenza. You know what it is, don't you? Well, I... The little bug gave you the works, eh? The TC fly? Kenny, have the boys make a litter. We're getting out of here in a hurry. Mr. Cunningham has sleeping sickness? I'm afraid so, Kenny. Rush that litter. Relax, Clunk. We're getting you to a hospital, but quick. Uh, is it Salisbury? No, the sack is closer. We'll head there. Oh, but that takes us right through Matabella territory. You're forgetting those savages, Clunk. We're going to Lasaka regardless of the Matabelli. Oh, I don't think 
What is it, Kenny? The boys are afraid of the Matabelli. They've run away. Fools. Go on with Mr. Cunningham. We'll go back and get some equipment. How do you feel, Grant? Oh, I'll, I'll be all right, Clyde. Thanks. Oh, thanks. That's fine, fine. Thanks. Go far, Kenny. I was going to heat some broth for Mr. Cunningham. Go far till we leave Matabelli country. Understand? Use a primer stove. Yes, sir, Mr. Beatty. Kenny. Matabella drums. I know. Wish I knew what they were up to. Do you think they've spotted us? Maybe. Maybe they don't even know we're here. That drums beat the dance of war. I don't like this waning. We better have a look around. Wait, steak and chops. Tell them to guard Mr. Cunningham. Just... Aren't you a little bit off the beaten path? Blimey, where do you spring from, mate? I was investigating the row those natives are making. Are they friends of yours? In a manner of speaking, yes. Good. I was afraid they might cause us some trouble. My safari partner's sick. We came through here on a shortcut to the Saki. Oh, I wouldn't have chanced it, Mr. Uh... Beatty. Clyde Beatty. If I was you, Beatty, I'd get out of here and fast. The Wombazi don't come to strangers in their land. Wombazi? They're tough. Better pull out, chum. What about you? <laughs> they won't harm me. Oh? How come? Well, that's a long story. Why not come back to camp and tell me about it? Okay, baby. What's your name? Grubs. Well, Grubs, I'll feel a bit easier with a friend of the one Bassie at camp. Come on. Hadn't you better lie down, Grant? No, no, Clyde. Mr. Grubbs' story is too fascinating. Anyway, one of the symptoms of my condition is somnolence by day and insomnia by night. Please continue, Grubbs. Uh, there ain't much more to it. I seen this here native youngster floundering around in the water. A big clock was about to have the tight for his tea. So I blast the brute with my blunderbuss. Since then, you've lived with the Wambasi, eh? That's right. The king was that grateful for me having saved his only son and heir. You say you've been with the Wambasi for five years, Grubbs? Why don't you leave? Ah, 
Ah, there's the rub. I can do what I please, except leave. <laughs> like the Oriental custom. Save someone's life and you're responsible for him thereafter, eh? That's right. Oh, I've often thought of making a break for it. If I had a boat, I could get away down by the river. But you don't have a boat? No. Tell me, Grubbs, what are the wombats is so steamed up about tonight? It's the death mask ceremony. A couple of young girls got caught stealing the king's gold. Blimey, that's worse than treason. <laughs> They'll end up by having their bloody heads cut off. Might be a good time for us to clear out, Grant. Want to come along, Grubbs? You can help us get out of here. You mean you'll take me with you? That's the idea. You got a deal, gents. I'll get my gear together and I'll be right back. I've a hunch, a strong one. Kenny, stay, Chubbs, on your feet. We're moving. Clyde, aren't we waiting for Grubbs? We're getting out of here now. But Grubbs said he'd come back. If that joker comes back, he'll bring those savages with him. And we're not waiting. I knew Clyde wanted to move out quickly, so I insisted upon trying it on foot. Kenny, have a look around. I have a hunch that Grubbs has a boot hidden somewhere around. Yes, Mr. B. Yes, yeah, please. What are you looking for, Clyde? I'm not sure, but I believe this is where we saw Grubbs. This fellow grubs the thief. Look at this, Grant. Why, there's a fortune there. One bossy gold. Mr. Beatty. You were right, Mr. Beatty. I found a dugout hidden by the trail. So the little man was lying about not having a boat. But why? This is why. He's a thief. But if he has the boat, why hasn't he made off with his treasure by now? Because he's greedy. Someday it'll kill him. One bossy drugs. They've stopped. Grubs. Grubs. You'll send the Wambasi after us? Yes, I thought. Wait, well, what about using the boat, Clyde? We'll never make it. We'll try to hide. Leave the litter. Go ahead, Tops. The next half hour was a nightmare of suspense. Clyde and Kenny half dragged, half carried me through the tortuous undergrowth of the jungle. What seemed endless hours we struggled through alternately shadowed and moonlit patches of the jungle. made a fair mess of things, didn't you? Thanks to you, 
Those poor native girls on trial don't stand much chance, do they? Not after Grubbs got through framing them. What do you mean by that, Beatty? I mean you've been stealing the Wombasi treasure, letting poor natives take the rap. Smart, ain't you? Chaps got to look after number one in this world. Self-preservation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Those girls. They had a trial, nice and legal. Legal? You call that hocus pocus out there a trial? If the king keeps his blinking mask on, you're innocent. If he shows his face, a belly death mask. Just a kid. He's still the king. But I'm the boss. You got us into this mess and you're gonna get us out of it. Yes, through now you are. I'm the boss around here. You'll see. Come on, Jack! You and the king are coming with us, so keep them back.
Why, how are you? <laughs> uh, my, 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 what a trip we had this time. I just hope that bounder doesn't dream up another safari for a long time. Did you hear the news? The news? Now, what news, Mr. Cunning? The news that Clyde Beatty and I are finally going home. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Now, I have some things to return, and you can itemize them against us. Uh, just a minute, please. Hello. Uh, yes. Oh, is that you, Clyde? Uh, how are you? <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, he just came in. Uh, yes. It's for you, Mr. Cunningham. It's Mr. Beatty. Mm -hmm. Hello, Clyde. Yes, just finishing up here. Well, yes, sir, I'll be ready to leave in a few minutes. No. Black Panthers. Why, Clyde, that's almost impossible. Y yes. Yes, all... All right, Clyde, right away. I've got to go. Clyde's waiting for me at the airport. Black Panthers, what next? But, but you have a rebate coming, Mr. Cunningham. I won't have anything if I don't... Oh, my film, Mac, oh. my film. Quick, quick. Good. You can take it out of the refund. I'll see you later. Goodbye. I'll never understand that man as long as I'll live. <laughs> and so we were on our way again. Only this time, Clyde was after Black Panthers for his famous circus. I knew this would mean many exciting adventures ahead for me. And there always will be, as long as I stay with Clyde Beatty.